someone contact me who was agoraphobic. So the th thought of going out, the fear there was really bad, but he was receiving um, benefits because of it. Mm. So I remember speaking on the phone and he was, he was saying, can I come with a friend? Not a problem, but they won't be allowed in the room. They'll have to wait outside. Mm. And I chatted away a bit and there was something on my mind. I don't know if you've ever had this where you've got like a sense of instinct. Yeah. yeah. And I said to him, if I help you overcome your issue, are you aware you'll lose your benefits? Mm. And then I just kept the call silent. Mm. And for any salespeople watching, you know that was the close. So as soon as you ask it, you shut up. And he said, oh, I don't think I'll come and see you, Gary. Mm. So it would be more painful for him to lose his benefits than for him to overcome his phobia. Yeah, so when you have a behaviour or a belief, there's sort of like things that are in place, there's an impetus to kind of like keep you in that yes. position. And so with that in mind, sort of like, and I think this is really like the big question that I'm interested in is, what evokes change in people, do you reckon? So sort of like whether you're on stage and... Uh, not to be too stereotypical, but if you're a, a traditional stage hypnotician, you're trying people act like Elvis or a chicken or whatever, or if you're doing something actually of value and you're in uh, having a session with somebody and you're trying to overcome some trauma or trying to stop a fear of heights or public speaking or stop smoking or all the amazing things that you can do, it's sort of like what do you think is the impetus for change when there are so many factors trying to keep the status quo of yeah. the individual, if that makes yeah, sense? Absolutely. I know that's quite a packed question because I suppose it depends on the individual, it depends mm -hmm. on the, the life circumstances, and and your relationship as a put you know between the two of you and all that kind of stuff but is there kind of like a, a reoccurring thing that allows people to get out of their own way or that is yeah. just a driver to 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 help change yeah know, one so thing they... dog there's one thing oh right okay just one thing okay well, i feel like i'm being set up here but <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not pain motivates okay okay so my job normally is to find out from them look if you don't overcome this issue What's it going to cost you in your health, your relationships, you as a person? What's mm. it really going to cost you? And that's the one thing I'm going to focus on. Not how I can help them overcome it, mm. because that's the question that will either get deep inside of their emotions that they need to make and take some action. Because what happens, inertia sets in, you're right. All these different things that are occurring, it's like a rock on, on, on the sofa. It's not going to move. Mm. You know, that, I can talk to... To we're going to put it on there, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have all sorts of oh, no, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but you can imagine, like, like there's yeah. a rock there, and like, I might want to push it. Now, the more I push it, mm. I might get a bit of movement. Yeah. That's what we're after. As soon as I get a little bit of momentum, boom, then we can get going. Mm. So for me, it's one thing. Pain motivates more than pleasure. It was Freud that said we would do more to avoid pain yes. than gain pleasure. And just to back that up, it is true because if you were to stand on hot coals, you'd get off them as quickly as possible. Oh, yes. But a lot of people stay in the same place because they feel comfortable. Yeah, if it's warm and it's nice and you've got the sound of the sea in the background and dogs. I should go and do this, but I'm not, I can't be, yeah. I'm, life's good at the moment. I'm going to maintain familiarity. That's right. You know? That's right. So upsetting that uh, little status quo, if, if they want to make it a change as well, because I'll often ask someone, do you really want to make a change? Are you really here right now to make that change? Mm. Well, if there's any hesitation there, I've got to dig around the hesitation. Because whilst they hesitate, they wait. And I know they're, they're, they're beautiful rhyming words, but it's the truth. Those that hesitate, wait. Mm. Those that take action can move on. Just as you and I were chatting, sometimes like with this, this, this show that you're putting on, you're not quite sure which way it's going to go, but you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. yeah? And by taking that action... Each time you do it will take you in that different slight direction. And also you get feedback because it's sort of like, it's trial and error really. You've yeah. got to kind of have some sort of a structure, some sort of a plan, but you can't over plan it because you never yeah. know the external factors or what people are going to say or do or if something's going to be recorded or not. You know, you always have little problems and stuff. But the idea is that you learn from them and not to not take action because you're afraid of not making mistakes. That's right. You know, and, and be, you know, yeah. kind of... And the audience will tell you as well. So certain videos will be more popular than others. Yeah. When you're doing a session, it's sort of like some people find ways to help better than others, Absolutely. you know, other directions. Yeah. So it's about finding out... I think a lot of it is about listening as well. It's about learning how to be a good listener because people will tell you how to help them if you listen to them. So if you, the moment you go in, and that's the, one of the things I like about you is that you've got a lot of tools in your toolbox as opposed to having a set way of this is how you heal someone. But it might not be true for that individual. Whereas that's if right. you've got a collection of tools, you can listen to them, like two ears, one mouth kind of thing. Listen, right, okay, I'll see what I'm doing. Now we'll try this, now we'll try that. And do you, do you think you can help pretty much anybody or do you think that it, it really depends on sort of like the individuals and stuff like hmm? 
yeah, yeah. truly, yeah. I, I always go with the mindset that if they've made the effort to contact me, mm. then there's absolutely no reason why I can't help that particular person make a change. Whether it's exactly what they were expecting, mm -hmm. well, that's sometimes outside my control. Mm. But I've always gone with that intent, and probably it's, uh, we were talking about it before we came on, on air, it, it's the intention of the mind, it's values, it's, it's what we believe in in different perspectives. Mm. So I know that there's two Ps, there's the perception and perspective of life, yeah, that I'm always thinking about, that's there in my mind's eye. Their perspective on what might happen and their perception could be completely different to what is going to happen mm. when I'm working with them. Yeah. However, my perspective is that I would never work with someone if I didn't think 100% I could help them. Mm. And you'd be wasting both your time. Correct, every single time. And it goes yeah. back to uh, younger years, it goes back to my judo days, uh, it goes back to the fact that you never half commit to a judo throw or a technique, because that's how you get injured. Mm. And that was drummed into me. It's 100% or nothing. Yeah, The outcome, you cannot dictate that, you can't. Mm. You can di I'll tell you what you can do, you can, you can be responsible for your actions, but not your results. Yes. Yeah, the journey, not the destination. Absolutely, kind of you've got to kind it's of like I'm going to do yeah. the things that I need to do to get there, and hopefully that will because it, and it will be better than if I don't do anything because then I'm going to be in a completely different place. Absolutely, but then again, if you don't do anything, that is an action of inaction. Mm. Yeah, you might have decided not to do something. At least you decided not to do it. Great, fantastic. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll be notified of our latest videos.